right, guys, we're trying to figure out where we want to go today. Had a little bit of a hiccup, blew out a tire on the, on the trailer. Kind of knew it was coming for a while. Luckily, we were prepared. It took us about 25 minutes to change the tire, and we made it to the boat ramp before it got packed. I mean, the sun's out right now, but once it gets a little bit warmer, oh man, that's when everybody comes out. Brought the heaviest gear we have and possibly will ever use. I mean, you gotta take advantage of the, what may be good weather, who knows. Okay, so we didn't bring any crab, and I forgot the damn Benito. Or the oh, damn, I forgot it too. Got the false algae in the truck. Well, this route is gonna take us through uh, 14 Mile Rock. Yeah. So, might be able to catch our own algae. Let's start finding my gloves without crashing into something. What do you say, it's about 37, 38 degrees right now. Sun's coming up, sky looks clear. Water temperature around here is about uh, 50 something. The stream is calling for 72 degree weather, which is why a lot of people right now are going out. Today's the last day of uh, recreational tuna. Every boat that thinks they have a chance is gonna be out there. All right, people, let me show you what we got going on here. I got this jig, it's a Nomad jig. I call it my Waldo jig. We're about 23 something, maybe 24 miles off. The water temperature's real low, but there is one fish that doesn't mind the cold water, and that's black sea bass. And they're here for sure. You would figure black sea bass, uh, you know, a big one is 14, 15 inches, but this long jig, you'd think they wouldn't hit it, but they will. Slow jigging, and then I pick it up, Pick it up all the way, let it drop. They usually love that drop. Dave's over there killing them on his side. So I got a little flutter jig on here in pink. Oh, that didn't take long at all. Got them all excited. Let's see what it brought up. Made two pops. Two pops on it. Black sea bass, he spit up a vermilion. Did it? Yeah, it's floating right there. I don't know if you can see that, but you can get an indication of what the black sea bass are eating by what they regurgitate. There we go. Oh, he's got, he's got some shoulders on him. I'm almost certain that is not a black bass. It feels like a, like a rock coming up. Oh, oh that's why. He felt all weird. I foul hooked him. He's got stripes. Yeah. And a gut full of something. They are feeding on little vermilion down there like crazy. Now that's a nice size one. That's usually a keeper. We don't even have these jigs tipped with anything. No, no procure, nothing. They're really lively. That makes me think, man, a little bit further out with some warmer water, deeper water. Might be money. Oh! Sea bass here too. Yep, there you go. Look at that. You got a vermilion right in his, in his, in his kisser. Vermilion sitting in there. Oh, damn. We'll leave his, uh, his breakfast in there. Oh! Maybe he'll, oh, he ended up spitting it up. Oh, there we go. Uh, I'd be surprised how much pull these little fish have. There you go. Another black bass. Every single, they're feeding for sure. Every single one that we've caught so far has some form of bait fish in their mouth. Let's see what this guy has in his mouth. He has some other enormous fish in his mouth. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> I think it's a Tom Tate, the looks of it. Yeah. But yeah, these guys can eat. Live line might have, might have just got smoked. Got some weight. I got plenty of line. If it's a runner, I don't have the leader for that. He's coming in quick now. Not put too much pressure on him. 
Uh, Albie maybe? Also good bait. False albacore. Good bait. Cool. All right, got something on here. Give me a run for my money. A lot of kicking. We have tried it all today. Oh. All right, well, he's feisty. Alamico Jack, good eating fish. Let's see if we can get a few of these. But we have run into a slew of problems today. Fuel, trailer, lost GPS signal for a while. This is a heavy rod. That might be an AJ. Well, big Almaco. There we go. Oh, that's an Almaco, dude. Yeah, I think it is. That is a large one if I've ever seen one. A quality one. Let me get you. Sometimes you just gotta keep trying. yours same damn thing yep but yeah you see how the young one's got the yeah. greenish yellowish yeah. all right we'll drill in with about 100 105 foot of water so i went up to uh yeah. <laughs> went up to 100 grams on the jig so it gets down there faster and I can work it pretty pretty quick. But let's try to get this guy up here. <laughs> Finally found some fish. I'm glad we found something that we could eat. Those AJs are fun, but they're no good for eating. This one seems to be a pretty decent size too. I'm trying to see if there's any other fish coming up with him. Yeah, there's fish down there with him. Oh, sure. Yeah, another big old. That one's gotta be an AJ. This one appears to be another Amico. Or Almaco. Yeah. There we go. You know, I'm just throwing that term out there, yellowtail. But last time I looked at, did a little bit of research on them. Yeah. That's what they said they're, they're also known as, is a yellowtail amberjack. There we go. That ought to make some sandwiches. All right, we boated a few fish. On the rods on artificial, I'm gonna go ahead and throw out the live line. Maybe entice a different species. These have all been jack species, like George suggested. Just get that live line out there. A little light on bait, but uh, we got enough to play with. I'm gonna throw this Menhaden milk slash oil. It used to have milk in it, and then we put oil in it. Menhaden oil, not obviously car oil. We got the chum bag out because there's a bunch of. Almaco, we're catching with jigs. We have had one hell of a day. GPS went down, blew a tire, but all those things happen for a reason. Because of that right there. You see that? I don't know. I don't know what that was. I couldn't tell you. All right, so again with the seven knot circle hook, and take one of our cigar minnows here, hook them straight up through the chin. Both the bottom and the top lips come out not too far back on the fish because you'll go through the brain and kill it. I don't want it to stay alive, but we'll punch them out right there. All right, lob that out the back and just let it sit until the drag starts singing. So this is my little uh, a little slow piss jig, which works pretty good. I think it's 120 gram is what I'm using as far as the jig. I think we're sitting at uh, 106 feet right now. And the bottom is loaded. And there we go. Just like that. And these things are powerful. This one's probably a little bit smaller than the last one. The smaller one's 
typically make for better eating. Yeah, he's not. Now this little reel may seem tiny, but this thing has a massive retrieve. And it has fantastic drag. I think it's 30 pound drag, I want to say, if not more. And there it is. Ladies and gents, that's what's out here. <sighs> oh God. That's what we get out here. Almaco Jacks, not to be confused with Amber Jacks. These are actually really, really good eating. We're definitely gonna keep this one for size and for food. I'll show you what I got here. The 100 gram I was talking about, these are mustads and typically throw their zippy jig, but uh, went up to a daggerman because daggerman, you can get 100 grams out of a daggerman mustad jig. So you need a little extra weight. Sometimes you gotta switch uh, types. And that rod just bounced hard. So I think I got plucked off. Yep, pulled my bait right off. So we'll go ahead and rig up another one. Typically, if you watch the line, this live bait will put some bounce in the rod, but it'll get a lot bouncier when this bait fish realizes that something is after him. When he sees that predator coming up at him, he'll kind of panic and put a lot more bounce in the rod. So usually right before you get hit, you'll have this bait fish trying everything it can to get off this string. See what that does. I'll give this a watch real quick. So I'm letting it sink all the way to the bottom and put it in strike mode and then basically slow pitch. Been hitting about mid water column, so that, yep, mid water column. Holy crap, that one's got some shoulders on him. Woo wee! He smoked it, man. He hit mid water column. He hit it with a purpose. We're just gonna try to fight him. If you're wondering how am I fighting a fish with, with broad shoulders on this tiny little noodle rod, well, that's what these things are designed for. I'm gonna have to walk over. He's on your side. Oh boy. Oh God. Oh man. Oh, there he is. Dude, this little reel has a nasty retrieve, man. He's got other little AJs with him. Oh, and look at that. He's foul hooked. <clears throat> Call me a rookie. Uh-oh. <laughs> we go again. Let me give this a shot. It's kind of a mahi color on the jig. You'll see how fast I'm working this jig too, but we're, we're in the mid sixties way out here. So water temperatures kind of dictate how fast you work the jig. We're just gonna burn this straight up as soon as it hits the bottom. Give that a shot. Nope, let's cut it loose. Oh, oh, I don't know if you saw that stop, but it, it sure stopped. <laughs> and we're on. Yeah, that's a screamer. All right, we're gonna slow down a little bit here. Don't wanna lose him. Let him wear out. Put a little bit of, a little bit of drag on him. So there is structure in the area and we don't want him to get over into the structure and get that line tangled up. That line will cut real fast and in a hurry. If it gets on the metal or even rock. Not sure what we got here. It may be a maybe an amberjack. We're gonna have to put this real seat in my gut. He is certainly taking more line than I've been able to take. Oh, and it came off. Whew. That might have been a toothy critter because uh cut my line. Let's see how far up the line it is. No, it's right down there where the jig is. We're frayed up pretty good. So if you can see that, 
it may have gotten into some structure and just broke off. So what we'll do is call this my bite leader down here at the bottom. Not as long as your, as my main leader. What I might do is take this 40 and tie it onto some 80. Give me a little bit, a little bit more security. I'd like to hook in another one of those. So same thing, same pitch style, just slow pitch with 120 and they're on. It does not take long. And these things can fight too. It's a lovely, lovely fish to catch. Once they get here and they show up with their friends, this is pretty much an all day thing here. Oh man, if you ever get this good on it, on some Almaco Jack, one of the best things to do is to put that chum out. Throw some men hating oil, whatever. It'll keep them around all day. The best thing is it'll bring their friends around and their friends could be anything. Could be blackfin. I mean, we're about almost 40 miles out in North Carolina where the water temperature 10 miles out was 48 degrees. Over here, 63 degrees. And it's another. There we go. Man, these are some nice Almaco. I haven't seen Almaco this size around here until we found this spot. Look at that, people. You can tell by that dorsal fin and the width of the body. I know it has the same, that same color on the face, but it is definitely an Almaco. And if eventually here, we're gonna have to start. <coughs> yeah, we're gonna have to dig into the cooler. So we're almost out of cooler space. The bag limit for these is 10 per 20 aggregate, which means the boat can only have 20. And uh, I think we can definitely achieve that. Now we're not gonna go crazy. All right, boom. George is taking over the live bait game. Hopefully he hooks up on something good. I've been owned really easily. So hopefully on his rig, he can get, get enough muscle on a fish to find out what keeps hitting us over there. I honestly think they're amberjack, but back to the jig. We're gonna do our jigging down low this time, see what happens. Quit playing with the uh, top water for now. I'm not seeing a whole ton of action, but see if there's anything down at the bottom that'll pick up this jig. All right, so let's try the difference between Big Nick Jig versus, versus Nomad. Pitch it out here a little bit. There is a lot of fish on the fish finder. They could be all Amaco, who knows? I'll tell you what I will do, so I'm gonna tighten up the drag on this thing a little bit. Put it all the way past. Oh, there it is. There it is, Big Nick works too. Big up the Big Nicks. I still work. Now I did have the same color pattern, sort of. This is a pink. I'm a big believer in the pink. And it's a little, little Almaco. Uh-oh. Ooh, there's a big old shark. Big old shark. Try to get some footage of a shark here. I think it was a sharker. I don't know about cold weather barracuda. Is that a thing? I don't know. You see him? No, that's a shark. You see him? Yeah, I see him there. That's a nice shark. Real, real nice shark. But we got George bringing up a nice Almaco. Caught the attention of a rather large shark. How many do we have? Hopefully I got some good footage of them. Still keeping them? Uh, I think that makes six. Six per? Yeah. Yeah, I'll keep these two. I'm good with that. We got the 
We got the luxury of cleaning on Sunday. <laughs> I have the luxury? I said we do. Typically we fish on Sunday, have to work on Monday, and then that leaves very little time to clean fish. Hoping to see that shark again, but nothing. Ah, uh, damn it. Uh.